talk about what we mean by an element. An element is a material that you can hold that consists of only one type of atom. Element? Any material consisting of only one type of atom. When I say there are about a hundred different elements, I'm saying there are about a hundred different types of atoms. If you have gold, gold is an example of an element because it consists of only gold atoms. Nitrogen, which is in the air we breathe, is an example of an element. If you look at it, it consists of only nitrogen atoms. These nitrogen atoms tend to group themselves in pairs, in molecules. We do not write with lead in our pencils. We use graphite in our pencils. And graphite is an example of an element because it consists of only carbon atoms. Carbon is an example of an element, and graphite is a kind of form of carbon. And we take all the different known elements, and we put them together in one large chart called the periodic table. It's a lot of important information up here. And this is a chemistry course. Do you think you might be wanting to memorize this thing? you need not memorize the periodic table. In fact, that's probably the last thing you should do with a periodic table. Chemists will carry periodic tables in their wallet with them as a reference. A periodic table should always be available for you. It's kind of like a dictionary. It should always be available to a writer to use as a reference. What are you going to see in your chemistry classroom up on the wall? The periodic table. Don't memorize the periodic table. Learn how to work with the periodic table. Learn that this is a road map to the properties of all the different known elements that make up our environment. It's a wonderful instrument that we use. And it contains all the known elements. And down here we see that we're getting to know more elements. It all goes up to about number 118, interestingly enough. An element is designated by what we call the atomic symbol. Now the atomic symbol is merely the first one or two letters it's used to designate the element. Let's look at an example, carbon. The first letter is C. So the symbol for carbon is C. Calcium also begins with the letter C, and we want to distinguish it from carbon, so we use the second letter A, C-A, for calcium. Silver, silver doesn't start with A-G. What's going on there? Turns out there's also a lot of history in the periodic table. You look, you'll see some of the elements have symbols that don't correspond to their modern names. These elements are elements that have been known for quite some time, since antiquity in some cases. And those weird looking symbols are in fact derived from their Latin names. The AG for silver comes from Argentum, the A and G. Silver's been known for some time. Thousands of years, all right? And so its, name, its symbol is derived from its Latin name. A mercury, HG? HG, stands for Hydra Argerium, something like that. HG, HG right there. Hydra means water. This is silver, liquid water, or liquid silver, quicksilver. Mercury, it's a liquid metal, right? And that's where the name comes from. Hydra Agarium HG. So that's it. The atomic symbol is used to denote this, the, um, the element that you have. Elemental formula. We found that uh, in the case of nitrogen, the nitrogen atoms tend to group together in pairs, a nitrogen molecule. And we can indicate how it is that the atoms within an element like to pair off by what's known as the elemental formula used to show how atoms within an element are grouped together. Nitrogen, we saw, is already, as we already saw, has the nitrogen atoms in pairs, and so, uh, there it is, we use the atomic symbol N2. The subscript tells us that each unit is a pair. Uh, here's oxygen. Oxygen also comes in, the atom, atoms come together in pairs, and we have O2. And O2 is the elemental symbol. Ozone. 
Ozone's another type of material. Ozone's not the same as that oxygen that we were looking at before. This is oxygen, O2. That's the stuff we breathe. You know, you see the side of a container, a, a gas container for uh, the hospital for somebody to breathe. It says O2 on the side. <laughs> That's the stuff we need for, for living. Mm -hmm. That's O2. It's an element because it consists of only one type of atom. Ozone is really the same element, but a different form of it. In, a case, in the case of ozone, we have O3. The three subscript tells us that the oxygen atoms are in triplets. Hmm. If you were to go from oxygen to ozone, would that be an example of a physical or chemical change now? Got that? <laughs> 